Father God, thank you for this day, and thank you for letting us be here to listen to the sermon and praise you. Help Dr. Peter to give us a meaningful and powerful message to us, and from learning, let us know and understand your holy words. Help all the people to overcome their difficulties that they will face, and help them to uh, not be led into temptation or selfishness, but uh, instead uh, glorify them. Then, let us focus uh, on the talents that we have to glorify you and use them for good use. Uh, lastly, uh, we honor you and we praise you for uh, through this worship. I pray everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I am going to speak on the theme that says endurance. Most of the successes that we know, success stories that we read in a book or listen as a testimony from people, they are the result of very great endurance. Please, all of you say endurance. Do it. <laughs> I see that. Do it. Don't quit. Now, as you can see on the picture here, I feel very sorry for this, this man here. Right? Probably he has been working for many, many years with great endurance, determination, but at some point when the success is almost right there, he quit. I don't know whether he realizes how many minutes or how many days left for his success. 1992, there was an Olympic game that took place in Barcelona. And I'm pretty sure most of you know a very great uh, event that took place in that uh, Olympic game. A young athlete, back then young, by the name Derek Redmond, he was a 400-meter sprinter, a British athlete. He set the record in British history. And he represented his country to uh, compete in the Olympic Games. God is watching over us. We have no option but to finish the race. Are you determined? His father said, we will finish the race together. To quit is not an option. To give up is not an option. Redmond, he continued the race limping. The entire world was watching. His father, his coach, his country, 65,000 people in the stadium, and the rest of the world on their television. He has a reason to quit, but his mind says no. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up. So he said, I'm here to finish the race. Not only the son, but the father also was determined. How many things have you started, but you haven't finished? Martin Luther King Jr., he said this. Let's read it together. One, two, three. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. Whatever you do, in whatever responsibilities that you have engaged yourself, keep moving forward. We have already started the race. Life is like a maze. By birth, we find ourselves in the middle of the maze of life. Therefore, we needed to continue to navigate the way out. In the middle of the maze, you can't quit. You will find yourself between a rock and a hard, hard place. And to quit will not be a solution. The path of success, as I've already mentioned to you, is not always as smooth as we want it. Sometimes the path of success becomes rough and tough, if not always. What determination do you have to continue the race, the race of life? People usually intend to run away from hardships. This is very natural. When things are getting tough and rough, when we are very much challenged, we think to exit is a solution. What is hard for you? One of the things that I know in Korea, because military service is compulsory, most boys wanted to quit or skip. They don't want to try that one. Or maybe too much study. 
Do you sometimes consider to quit or homework? I just brought some examples, but there are so many things that are challenging for us that we wanted to quit. Then we consider once in a while, we say, should I quit this? Let me tell you this one. This is very normal. It's a very normal feeling and normal thinking, but you don't need to stay there. When this kind of thought comes to you, you need to think that you are not there to quit. As I've already mentioned, that there is a God who is watching over you. Redmond's dad, more than anybody else in the crowd, was following the, the, the progress of his son was making. He feels the pain. He ran into the truck and he was helping. God is watching over you. God is watching over all of us. Do we have some people that we know in the Bible who intended to quit the race? who wanted to give up in the middle of their call, their ministry. There are some good examples for us. And not only that one. There are also people who endure till the end. Two characters from the Bible. One is the great prophet Elijah, oral prophet. And the second one is Apostle Paul. As you all know, the story of prophet Elijah, he was a very great, mighty prophet of the Israelites. As I've already told you, there are three different kinds of prophets. One is oral prophets like Elijah and Elisha, and major prophets and minor prophets. They didn't write a book, but they are very great prophets of the Israelites. Very brave during the tribulation time of Israel. When Ahab and his wife and the other nations were troubling Israel, he stood strong. Very determined, and he even fought the false prophets of Baal. Very faithful in the time of adversary. He challenged the prophets of Baal, as I've already told you. He was fighting 450 false prophets of Baal, and Elijah was facing them alone. He defeated all of them. But someday, the story of the juniper tree comes here. Elijah was considering to quit. Because there was a threat coming from Elizabeth, he wanted to give up. He said, I am alone now. I'm not greater than my father's. Therefore, he said, I quit sleeping here. And this is what he said. Let's read it together. One, two, three. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and re requested for himself that he might die and said, it's enough now. Oh Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my fathers. Even the great prophet Elijah, the mighty prophet, once he considered to quit, he wanted to give up. Sleeping under the juniper tree, he prayed, and his prayer was, I had enough. I give up. I want to die. Well, if you read the prayer list of Elijah, one of his prayer lists says, God, I want to die. Take my life. That was very tough. It was a time of depression and loneliness where he wanted to exit. But what happened? Let's read it. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baked on cord and a cruise of water. And he looked and behold, there was a cake baked on the cord and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. And he arose and did eat and drink and went into the stream. What are some of the vocabularies that we are using to express our emotion and sentiment, especially when we have challenges? I withdraw. It's enough. I resign. I had enough. What language do you use? Elijah said, take my life. I give up. I had enough. I want to die. But God said, there is a great path ahead of you. And in fact, juniper tree is a symbol of restoration. Reforming your strength, reforming your vision, 
reforming your determination to continue forward. When we study the biography of Elijah, under the event under, uh, the, under the uh, juniper tree, the ministry he performed was far greater than the previous one. He anointed many, three people as you know. The second one is, was Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul, he passed through many challenges and difficulties. He was in prison many times as you know, but he was a symbol of endurance. While he was in prison, and waiting his sentence, he said this. Let's read it together. One, two, three. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Three things he said. Number one, he said, I fought. Any kind of battle is demanding a lot. Life is like a battle. Are you willing to fight without giving up? Second, he said, I have finished the race. For each of us, God has already marked certain distance to run in our life. And we are required to finish the race. But Paul was confident enough to say, I have finished the race before God and before people. And then he said, I have kept faith. What would be our testimony about ourselves? We still have a long way to go. We need to restore our strength. How many things have you started and you quit? I sometimes, when I discuss with people, uh, recently one, one father was talking with me about his son, a high school student, and, and he told me, like, my son, he tries so many things, and in his life, he haven't finished even one. Now I am praying for him to finish this one, a certain job. Very devastated. To quit is breaking a heart of parents and God. What do we learn? Number one. If you wanted to continue the race, you need to have the end in your mind. Have the end. That helps you. That is like a vision. You imagine your destiny, your end. And until you reach there, you will never give up. Because the end is capturing your mind. You will be obsessed by your destination. Number two... Enjoy the process itself. Not only thinking about the end, even the process that you are passing through with all the challenges and the problems, they are something that you enjoy. When you look at the picture here, this man has a destination. Even the adventure itself is something to be enjoyed. He needs to be proud of himself that he is trying this challenging path. Third, know that to quit is not a solution. In fact, actually, when we decide to give up in between, if we have the strength to give up, why not to continue? There is no easy exit in life. We can't just quit on the way because it's not a solution. Number four, be determined to finish what you have started. In the beginning, when we start, we needed to have that determination in our mind whenever we start something. Let us pray.